There are essentially two main reasons why we need to know about the rotator interval from an ultrasound perspective. But first, we need to know what it is. The rotator interval is a complex anatomical region that plays an important role in the stability and function of the shoulder. To identify it, we look at the most proximal aspect of the biceps, just where the bicep sits up and off the humerus. Here we can see the subscap, biceps and supraspinatus tendons and the superior glenohumeral ligament has a variable origin that will run just underneath the long head of the biceps. The coracohumeral ligament originates from the coracoid process and runs over the top of the biceps to envelop the biceps and supraspinatus tendons. It has a component that will form the first and most superficial layer of the supraspinatus tendon and a component that will run deep to become the rotator cable. Now the rotator interval is implicated in biceps instability or subluxation. Now the modified Habermeyer system incorporates six types of biceps instability. Type one is where there is a partial thickness tear of subscap only, producing mild displacement of the biceps. Type two is where there is mild displacement of the biceps due to a superior glenohumeral ligament tear. Type three is where there is an extra articular dislocation due to a partial thickness tear of subscap and also a tear of the SGHL. Type 4, again, extra articular dislocation anterior to subscap due to a CHL tear. Type 5 is where there is intra-articular dislocation due to a full thickness tear of subscap and also a CHL and SGHL tear. And finally, type 6 is where we have intra-articular dislocation due to a full thickness subscap tear and a tear of the SGHL. Now, do I use this system when assessing an unstable biceps? Well, no, I don't. It's not always that easy, but it is really important to know to refute the perpetual myth that abounds that says that if the biceps is subluxed, that is due to a tear of subscapularis. The second reason why knowledge of the rotator interval is important is in the context of a frozen shoulder. MRIs will often report on edema throughout the rotator interval, and multiple studies will speak of hyperemia of the rotator interval as being a highly specific sign of a frozen shoulder. Now I'm somewhat skeptical of this finding because I've seen hyperemia in the rotator interval in patients that definitely don't have a frozen shoulder. So when I see it, I tend to downplay the finding. We can, however, see thickening of the coracohumeral ligament. To identify the coracohumeral ligament, simply move to the coracoid process and with slight external rotation, we will see tightening of the CHL. Thickening of the CHL is one of the more characteristic manifestations of a frozen shoulder. Thanks for listening, guys. Like and subscribe for more content.